Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. My name is Olo and today I'm continuing our breakdown of everything we learned yesterday during the Rise event, specifically talking the new Switch skill system, as well as some information from the gameplay we got today. This new system is adding new abilities and core weapon changes to every single weapon, letting us create our own preferred loadout unique to us. Now we know that by progressing the game, we'll unlock the ability to switch specific regular attacks and silk bind attacks. As it turns out, we have new actions for all 14 weapons in Rise. Right now, we know one new silk bind attack for each and every weapon, and in the latest gameplay from the trailer, we know multiple regular attack changes. A lot of the confirmations of these abilities come from the official website with some nice information about each, as well as what we learned in the trailer itself. The website itself tells us this, each weapon will have three types of switch skills, which will greatly increase our options to play with each weapon. At this time, we don't know every detail of all of these switch skills because they've not yet listed the normal attack changes for all the weapons, only the silt binds, so there's obviously more to come. But while I was working on this video today, we had that new gameplay for the Goss Harag Hunt, and in that, we suddenly saw how the switch skills are going to work in game. By heading to an item box, which can be done in the tent mid-hunt, you can select the new options of switch skills. In that, we can see three switch skill options, and in this footage, with the charge blade specifically, we saw two options for each skill aka six switch skills to choose between for each weapon minimum. Here we see the charge blade change its core playstyle and choose between various silk bind attacks. What I can say for sure is that this new switch skill system comes across as a much more approachable version of both hunter combat styles and weapon arts back in the game series. With that new gameplay we just got today, I better start with the charge blade. During this gameplay, we saw the hunter head straight into the tent and access the new switch skills menu in the item box. This lets us see three main options for the charge blade skills and also the return of savage axe mode. Firstly, we see the player swap out condensed element slash for condensed spinning slash. The element slash is the sword charging, increasing the power of the sword for a period when used, whereas spinning slash brings back the spinning saw blade. Switching the weapon to axe mode when doing so, causing multiple hits until the mode is disengaged. Also stating that longer hits in the axe mode will turn the energy into vials as well. So it's kind of a slightly different version of a savage axe mode, which we were worried would be gone from the game in Rise. In that item box, we also saw the options for morph slash and counter morph slash. The morph slash is basically switching between axe and sword mode as always, and that provides a block with the shield during the initial switch. But the counter morph slash, if you want to choose that, will provide a longer block effect during those switches. And if an attack is actually blocked during that switch, while in that mode, the following element discharge slash will have its damage increased, which is very nice. And for that last switch skill we see here, we see counter peak performance, the already known silt bind attack from the demo. And this is swapped out for the new axe hopper silt bind, shown in the trailer as a huge leaping slam attack, unleashing a powerful element discharge on the way down. It looks incredible, and hopefully it'll be a more consistent and easier way to hit that elemental discharge, thanks to the added height of the attack. To say the least though, charge blade players, I hope you're happy, I know I am. This is looking really, really good. But now let's roll through each of the weapons and what I was able to learn from the original trailer and the information on the website. I'll follow the layout of that website if you want to read along with me. Firstly, the Great Sword, who has the new Siltbind attack, Adamant Charge Slash. To use the Charge Slash, we just have to replace Hunting Edge, which was the leaping wire bug attack. This sees us dash forward with a wire bug and then landing a strong Charge Slash. However, this ability actually allows you to withstand knockdown attacks by hardening your body as you dash forward forward, like a shoulder tackle at the same time as performing a charge attack. That's pretty incredible. You might recognize this as the old great sword weapon art, Brimstone Slash, and that's absolutely a theme with a lot of these silk bind attacks or even normal weapon changes. They're old hunter arts or hunter combat styles brought forward. In any case, I think this should be a great and very useful addition to the kit of a great sword player. But now let's move on to the long sword, which has two very interesting details. With the new trailer, we did not see the long sword's new silk bind, which we saw long ago in the original trailers, now confirmed by the website, that Sakura Slash is swapped out with Soaring Kick, which does mean this replaces Helmbreaker, a hard sell for me. This new slash spins like a whirlwind, dashing and slicing forward while using a wire bug for the momentum. The hit causes multiple lacerations which apparently induce additional damage. Does that mean it's a bleed effect like a damage over time or is this straight up increasing your raw damage on a target for a period? But on top of all of that it also raises your spirit gauge by one level 
instantly, which is very, very useful. I'm looking forward to learning more about that, but the long sword's extra special today because it's our first regular attack change that I spotted in the trailer. The spirit slash combo that finishes with your spirit level up and sheath attack was suddenly replaced by a very familiar and awesome spirit combo. The Valor style spirit combo from the previous games. This appears to be another of the options to change your core gameplay. In this case, changing your spirit combo from the default to this Valor style. Personally, I really like the Valor Spirit combo and would love to use it again. It's incredible for reaching up high and attack things like Tails. This doesn't mean Valor style or stance is back, guys, but it aligns with the Switch skill system, letting us change our possible moveset between the options they've given us. So with Charge Blade, Sword, or Axe Charging, the Long Sword appears to have the different Spirit Gauge combos. Next up then, we have the Sword and Shield. The SNS gets itself a new Silk Bind attack in the Metsu Show Ryu Geki, which we might recognize from the old games in Another Hunter R. This will switch out with the Windmill, so not too bad of a swap. In return, we'll get this Jumping Wirebug attack. By using your shield, you uppercut the monster, which is fantastic in itself. Plus, as seen, there's a brief moment where you actually perform a guard with the attack right at the start of the move. If you successfully counter, it'll increase the damage dealt, which is very nice and pretty flashy. A simple addition, but a great addition to the SNS. Next, the Dual Blades then. The Tower Vault will switch out piercing bind which is a high dps move so maybe hard to swap that one out this silk bind launches a wire bug up into the air dragging you with it dealing no damage directly but does perfectly position you up high for that incredible levi spinner attack or any aerial move of your choice. This is a solid evasion option, since it does send you pretty high, and it also gives the dual blades a way to focus harder to reach areas, and it does look very cool. But like I said, losing Piercing Bind, which is a pretty awesome DPS ability, I'm not sure whether I think I would run this. What do you guys think? Moving on then, we have the Lance. The Silk Band Attack Spiral Thrust was shown a long time ago in this short clip. Swapping out Anchor Rage, which is a parry that boosts your attack power, this thrust is a sort of fast two-step maneuver letting you attack, reposition, and counterattack. Using the shield to parry, then using a wire bug to thrust forward, it seems like a pretty incredible combo against a proper enemy instead of these pleb small monsters here. However, things get a bit more interesting for me when we look at the clip here in the new trailer. This appears to be the adept hunting style lance attack, the counter cross slash landing a perfect guard, and then multiple swings in return. The spiral thrust is not described in this way, so I think this could be another regular attack combo that's slotted into your lance gameplay based on your switch skills. Next then, the gun lance. The weapon that made us super aware of regular attack changes, this was the huge leap in the Frost Islands. Charge shelling is the typical gameplay we had in the demo, the ability to fire off and charge single shots. But as shown here, we can actually drop charge shelling and replace it with a new blast dash leaping you forward at super speed for an aerial smash and a bit of a shell blast at the end. Good for evasion and gap closing compared to just charging your shell attacks. On top of that, we also have the new Silk Bind attack for the Gunlance, which was shown in the very first Rise trailer. This would be the Ground Splitter. This must replace the Hail Cutter Silk Bind though. The Ground Splitter has us dashing forward with a wire bug. This upward slash deals solid damage and also scrapes the ground during the attack. That heats up the barrel, temporarily increasing the damage dealt by the shells, worm steak shots, and wyvern fire. So, okay, yeah, hail cut is really good, but I have to admit, ground splitter has a lot of benefits. It's very interesting. Progressing on then, now let's talk hammer. This crazy looking Almadron hammer showcases our new silk bind attack, the dash breaker. This will switch out the spinning bludgeon. By rushing forward with a wire bug, the dash breaker negates any attack damage during that launch, then lands a big bonk at the end of the attack. It's all pretty quick, but a solid new option for the hammer. With the speed you can throw this out and the iframes it impressively has, I would actually prefer this over spinning bludgeon for sure, because that can be a bit awkward to land in my time using it. Moving on anyway to everyone's new favorite weapon, the haunting horn. Shown here is the new silk bind, bead of resonance. This is swapped out with Earthshaker, AKA the coolest silt bind attack and rise, so this is a tough one to lose. By placing a wire bug cocoon on the ground, the hunter can double up the hunting horn melodies. The same melody you play will also appear around the cocoon, and at the same time, that'll cause a sonic wave around the cocoon, dealing damage to any monster near it. A pretty interesting concept repeating the effect of your last melody while also sending out bursts of damage. I like the concept, and I, I hope it works well in the gameplay, but when it has to be swapped with Earthshaker, I don't know, what do you think? about that. Now then, the Switch Axe. Another interesting one, because this is one we saw 
ages ago. This is the soaring wyvern blade in an earlier trailer. This one swaps out invincible gambit, that frontal spinning attack, which was really good in the demo. But anyway, it leaps you up into the air with a wire bug, slashing on the way up and then forward slashing while midair. Then if that forward slash hits, the weapon activation gauge will fill up and we'll see a big explosion, kind of like maybe a zero sum discharge. A very powerful and flashy, pretty mobile attack, which should fit well into the Switch X kit. Right, so our next weapon has to be the Insect Glaive, the most debated and discussed weapon in Rise for its very lacking new silk binds in the demo. Today, I have good news. Firstly, we do have better silk bind options for more direct and aggressive combat. After all, that familiar diving attack from Iceborne is back in Rise. The Diving Wyvern will swap out with Recall Insect, no big deal to me, and it will allow us to do a dive attack by using a wire bug to pull us down from the air at great speed. The attack actually has a very small damage radius, meaning the damage is highly focused on one spot, so I guess you better aim well. It looks great, and it's wonderful to have a proper attack in the glaive, but that's not all we can say today. You see, during the gameplay in the trailer, we saw this tiny clip of a different Kinsect. It's super fast, and appears to attack in a multiple hit combo specifically. It looks like maybe a special ability rather than just normal neutral attacks. Right now, people are speculating about this like crazy, but I think what we can say for sure here is that as always, there will be different kinds of Kinsex. The slow default one we had in the demo and this much more speedy and aggressive one in this clip. There's other Kinsex we could see like maybe the dust types, but it's hard to say what will be in the game just yet and whether or not this was a special ability or just really fast and aggressive Kinsect attacking. In any case, the Glaive has an aggressive silt bind and has good options in Kinsects. So I think actually Insect Glaive is looking all right in Rise after all. Now then, let's move on to the ranged weapons, starting with the Light Bowgun. The new silt bind confirmed was one that we'd already had teased. It's the Fanning Maneuver, which we'll see swap out the Fanning Vault. Using a wire bug, we'll flank left or right at great distances, which will also, when used, give a temporary attack power buff, which I didn't know about. And while you're sliding, you can fire off shots, which looks cool as hell. But most importantly, that attack power buff is incredible, comparable to like the bow or greatsword silkbind attack buffs. I'm very happy to see that. Now let's talk about the heavy bowgun. Shown in this tiny clip against Rachner, the counter charger will swap out your counter shot. This new counter is, as you'd expect, a parry move using wire bugs, but in this case, we absorb an attack negating all its damage, and then the counter charger will shorten the amount of time needed for charged shots with the heavy bowgun. That's actually really useful. I really like the charging of heavy bowgun in Rise, but it did feel a bit slow. I figured in the full game we'd have armor skills to help out with that, but this silt bind should really help. However, finally, we're at our last weapon now. That would be the bow, of course. Aerial aim is one we've seen in a previous trailer so we knew this was coming. It'll swap out focus shot which was an incredible restore for your stamina. By jumping up straight into the air using a wire bug you'll fire off arrows from up high. These shots will be quote particularly damaging and then a close range attack using an arrow can be aimed directly under you at that like say the insect glaive dive. So we'll have increased damage on the aerial shots by the sound of it with the benefit of leaping to avoid damage and getting a good view of the monster. Pretty flashy and certainly has potential to be a really good silk bind, but we'll have to wait and see and actually use it in game ourselves. But there you have it. That was a lot to take in and explain. I hope this was useful and understandable to you guys. Let me know your thoughts on the various questions I was wondering about today, and let me know if you're happy with your weapon and its new details we had. Personally, I'm really happy to see that Valor style spirit combo in the longsword, but I'm not sure how I feel about potentially losing Helmbreaker. Until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye